My name is Kevin Danikowski, and this episode is going to be on how we process information. Well, first, we have top-down processing, created by Richard Gregory. He estimated that 90% of visual sensory information is actually lost before arriving to the brain. Thus, we have to utilize our existing knowledge to process the environment to make assumptions. Well, as you know, assumptions can be incorrect, resulting in hallucinations, for instance. In opposition of this top-down processing, there is bottom-up processing, which is better supported by E.J. Gibson and his experiments on visual processing. Bottom-up processing argues perception is necessary for survival and not actually subject to all this mental processing. Basically, what you see is what you get, then is processed in the visual cortex. To remember this, I think of top-down processing like a cloud above you, which has your existing knowledge, which you have to use to understand the world around you, whereas bottom-up uses everything at the bottom level, i.e. your environmental senses. This brings us to sensory information, which inevitably confronts a binding problem. The binding problem is asking us, how does different sensory pathways combine information to make a cohesive whole, like colored shapes or a visual scene? It's actually quite difficult to make a machine see as we do, much is at play here. It must go through some type of parallel processing. Parallel processing is just analyzing and combining information at the same time. Gestalt principles by Max Wertheimer and others actually help elucidate some of this binding problem. We're going to go over them very briefly. There are gestalt laws of how we create a unified whole. Law of similarity stating that we group similar-looking objects. Law of continuity, which states we continue shapes based on edges and past endpoints. Law of closure, which creates imaginary lines to close shapes. Law of proximity, which groups nearby objects. Law of figure and ground, which differentiates a figure from the background. Law of symmetry, which attempts to arrange elements in a symmetrical way. And lastly, law of pragnas, which is gestalt itself, stating stimuli will be perceived in the most simple form. Law of pragnas is essentially the law of practicality, which is an easy way you can remember it. Continuing that notion of simplicity, other methods are utilized by the brain. Rigidity describes the notion that we prefer to abstain from changing habits. This is rigidity. We create mental sets of our actions, and we even adopt a cognitive bias called functional fitness. Mental sets, or functional fitness, limit our ability to imagine performing different tasks than we're accustomed to, like the Dunker Candle Experiment. In this experiment, participants were given a candle, a box of matches, and tacks, and asked to attach the candle to the wall so it won't drip. As you would imagine, people tried to melt the candle onto the wall, but few actually thought of using the match box to hold up the candle. They thought the box could only be used as a match box. So we have rigidity, mental sets, functional fitness, all of which support simplicity but hinder our creativity.